What's up guys? So today I want to give you a kind of a review slash look at the Hammock Gear Phoenix 20 degree underquilt. I've had this underquilt for a while now. I feel like I've used it enough to kind of know its ins and outs. This has zero overstuff. This is basically completely stock, right as Hammock Gear sells it. This weighs 15.3 ounces with the stuff sack. It has 850 fill power, water resistant down. It is made with 0.67 ounce argon fabric on both sides. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the 11 foot Warbonnet Traveler Hammock. I'm then gonna go ahead and put it on the Warbonnet 10 foot Traveler Hammock. And I'm also gonna put it on a hammock it's not really designed for which is the Warbonnet Ridge Runner hammock and show you kind of how I came up with to get this to fit properly. Um, it's not really designed for that hammock and I guess this video is going to be kind of more towards that hammock and how to get this under quilt to work with it. Um, so let's go ahead and put it on. All right, here we are kind of uh, settled in here. Um, this is the War Bonnet Traveler hammock. This is the 11 foot version. Pay particular attention to uh, how much of my feet are covered. Um, this comes down a little bit past mid calf. All right, so I don't know if you can see how much of my uh, feet are covered here. Um, here's the top of my foot. And this is about mid calf for me. You can see here how much of this is covered. Um, so you only have maybe uh, a foot or two, pardon the pun, at the bottom uh, that's not going to be covered depending on how tall you are. Um, you know, realistically it's probably about, I don't know, maybe uh, 16 inches that aren't, isn't covered on me at the bottom. And this underquilt on this side is still well above my shoulder here. Um, I don't know if you can see from this angle, but this right here is the top corner and it's well over my shoulder. So this right here is actually uh, the suspension at the head end. Um, you have these little line locks here, which this is actually something that I did. Um, I put these heavier cords on. They came with uh, smaller, lighter cords. Um, and I felt that they just weren't enough to uh, really help tension the underquilt, so I replaced it with a heavier cord. Um, this is easy to just reach up. Uh, you kind of pull it. I don't know if it's going to cooperate, but you can just kind of pull it up this way to adjust it. It's easy to do in the hammock. So yeah, this is the uh, suspension. Um, we just have a Presic loop here, Presic, Prusik, however you want to say it. Um, and that, that also helps give you a little bit of adjustability. It's hard to do with one hand. Um, so yeah, you have plenty of adjustability. And also on, you have draft tubes here, which go all the way around the bottom of the hammock on uh or all the way around the top and bottom of the hammock on both ends and you have this little adjuster here um, that can tighten and loosen and this is uh, elastic as well all right this is the war bonnet traveler 10 foot hammock um i'm just gonna lay down you can see where my feet come to where my head is um we'll give you a couple looks around uh the bottom and the top and then we'll move to the uh, war bonnet ridge runner hammock So the 10 foot and the 11 foot traveler hammock pretty much fit this underquote exactly the same. Uh, you do have to adjust your suspension um, one way or the other depending on which hammock you have it on. I don't have this hammock perfectly hung. My ridge line's kind of loose. Uh, whatever, I'm just kind of uh, out here showing. I don't have a perfect tree set up because I got three hammocks kind of everywhere. That's why this hammock is kind of not set up properly. But still, even with a not ideal setup this uh this under quilt fits this hammock fine all right so we're in the 10 foot traveler hammock and you can see kind of how much uh coverage we have down here at the bottom um and then here at the top you can see where the uh the hammock is uh coming to by the darker color here and this comes well up over my shoulder on this side and you can see how much coverage it has on this side um, hopefully that's coming through. Got plenty of room here even for a bigger guy. Um, like I said, I'm 5'10", and this 
This comes right down to about mid calf for me. We'll go ahead and put this on the uh, War Bonnet Traveler hammock, or War Bonnet Traveler. We'll put this on the War Bonnet Ridge Runner hammock and kind of go over a couple ways that I've come up with to help tension this under quilt and seal up all the gaps. Alright, this is the Warbonnet Ridge Runner. Um, this is the hammock that everybody seems to have a problem um, fitting a traditional style underquilt on. When you lay down here, um, let me adjust the camera real quick. Alright, so when you lay down here, you'll see, I don't know, it's going to be really hard to pick up on camera, but the main problem with this underquilt fitting to this hammock are how these sides are cut. Um, these sides come down and there kind of is a gap between this side of the underquilt and the inside of this hammock. Alright, so right here between the underquilt and the hammock there's a little bit of a gap right there. That's where you're gonna get the cold spots that form and they're right here where you lay your arms. So when you're laying here and your arms are touched against the side um, you're gonna notice some cold area there. Other than that, that's the only place on this hammock um, where you get cold spots. Um, you can feel under here, there's no gap under here. It's all the underquilts touching the bottom of the hammock um, pretty much everywhere. Even um, if you reach up underneath your shoulder, everywhere behind here the hammock is uh, touching the underquilt and uh, that's really where you want it to touch. So the uh, shoulder area up here seals real nice. Um, I have this uh, draft tube adjustment all the way loose. Um, you could tighten this up, but I don't think it's necessary. Uh, the draft tube really helps seal out all the drafts up here. Um, and I don't notice any cold air um, rushing in behind here. Down here at the foot end, everything touches all the way out. You can see where I don't know if you can see it or not. Right here is where the hammock or the uh, underquilt stops. Um, so you pretty much have the same coverage on this hammock as you do a gathered end hammock. So I don't know if you can tell on the video, but it seals nice and tight around the bottom. Um, not sure what else to say about it, but it seals nice and tight. So yeah, that's basically the fit. Now I'm going to show you a way. Um, I've attached a ridge line to this hammock. Um, and I'm going to show you a way to pull this underquilt up. Um, it's fairly simple. Uh, you might already know what I'm gonna do, so stay with me. Alright, so to seal these gaps here on the side, basically what we can do is just run a piece of shot cord over top a ridge line. This is a non-structural ridge line um, to the other side here. And all that does is pull the sides in and up slightly and that closes the gaps completely on the side. One thing I'll mention is that this is the netless version of this hammock. Um, with the net on here, you can still do the same thing. You can still run a ridge line. It would just be over top the netting. Um, or, I don't know if you can do this or not. I don't know if the netting's strong enough. Um, maybe it would put too much tension on the netting um, to just run the shot cord over the top of the netting. Um, to either side of this. So let's get in here and we'll see how this works. All right, we're in the hammock and you can see this. We almost have zero tension on here. I mean, it's just enough to pull the underquilt up and it closes these gaps completely. Let's see if you can see that. See, there's no more gap there anymore. And all that does is just put a little bit of tension um, I mean, we're talking like two finger, just pulling it up, almost zero tension. So you could probably just take this right over the bug netting. Um, if this hammock had bug netting, you could just take it right over the top and it probably wouldn't bother it. Or you could just run a ridge line like I have here. So here's that little attachment point that I was talking about. It's just a little triangle sewn on there. And then this is just a... Uh, I don't know what these are called. I can't think of the name of these off the top of my head. But you can get these at places like Rip Stop by the Roll. And I just tied it on with a, a piece of string. And then on the other side, I just loop my shot cord through. So I only have one of them. And then here I've got the other one on. And this just goes over the ridge line. Pretty self-explanatory. And just 
pulls up on this just a little bit to tension and take away those gaps. Here's my ridge line. I just run it all the way through the uh, suspension here um, and attach it with a uh, pressic nut or a guy line nut, I think that's called. And so that way I can tension it and loosen it depending on my uh, hang angle and stuff like that. All right guys, that's it for the Hammock Gear Phoenix 20 degree underquilt. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments. Thanks for watching. You crazy mother.